This is the uh, Daily Telegraph, how the world's elite fell in love with Labour. Rachel Reeves grabs the spotlight at, at Davos as business leaders grow fed up with the Tories. And then this is some detail uh, from a, a Telegraph article um, which says, on cue, Labour now paints itself as the true party of low taxation. Shadow Chancellor Rachel Reeves told the swanky Dav Davos summit she wanted to ensure success is celebrated by cutting taxes for those earning more than £125,140 a year, paying the 45% top rate of tax. It's ironic that as an election approaches, Reeves now backs policies put forward by former Prime Minister Liz Truss in her 2022 mini budget, dismissed by Labour at the time and even now as deeply irresponsible. Um, that, that's obviously concerning because uh, Liz Truss's policies led to what everyone's saying, the, the, the economy crashing and stuff. Uh, but But also... You've spoken of this before. How is Labour supposed to fund anything um, that we need desperately to be funded if it's cutting taxes for the for the richest, not even raising them? I mean, you you talk about raising taxes for the for the very well off. Labour's talking about cutting them. Well, it's a disastrous policy. I mean, you know, people go to Davos or visit Rupert Murdoch basically to lick the boots off the wealthy elites and corporate barons to say, can we please take office? Can we? Can I please become prime minister? Can I please become chancellor? What they really need to do is put forward decent policies. And I'm, I'm you know, still awaiting those. The, the, the reason we don't, we have a spread of poverty, the reason we lack economic growth is because masses simply don't have enough purchasing power. And uh, for the last 40 years, we have been cutting taxes for the rich. It hasn't really given us any economic renaissance. So we need to row back from that. We need to find ways of improving the purchasing power of uh, the, the low and middle income families. If you look in the UK, what Rachel Reeves is talking about is giving more tax cuts. What, 271 billionaires who are already worth £684 billion? We have one percent of the wealth. One uh, percent of the UK population owns more wealth than seventy percent of the population combined, and uh, that <laughs> simply to give them more in tax cuts that just really beggars belief. Uh, what what this also means is that the, the future Labour government will be relying on relatively few people, not the masses, relatively few people to stimulate the economy. The median household, uh, the median wage in the UK at the moment is about 29,600, that is before tax. And after paying tax and national insurance, people have precious little left. That means half the population is already excluded from creating possibilities of uh, uh, economic renaissance. So if Labour wants to stimulate the economy, it will certainly have to increase taxes. But the worst thing is in Davos, Rachel Reeves also said that she wants to reduce the public debt. I mean, what, what would uh, taking out about £100 billion from the UK economy do? It will make it absolutely worse. And it is also actually bad for business. Because when the government spends, the private sector basically sells goods and services. So if you are saying, well, I'm going to really simply uh, cut uh, public spending, well, that simply won't do. That is not possible. The other side of the equation is you increase the, the national health uh, service queues. You, you know, you, people won't be able to find a dentist, won't be able to visit a GP, more visits to food banks. That is really disastrous. We, so we need a formula to increase the disposable income of low middle income families. And I don't hear anything at all about uh, that. Uh, yesterday or this week, the minister told me in parliament that 17.8 million adults, just think about the number, 17.8 million adults in the UK have annual income of less than 12,570 pounds. What we need to do is boost the income of those people. 
so that they can buy food, clothes, get on the bus, go occasionally go to cinema, buy shoes. That is how you stimulate the economy. And this number, 17.8 million, is lower than two, uh, number two years ago, which was 21 million. So what the government has done is by freezing uh, uh, income tax thresholds, national insurance thresholds, they are taxing the poor more. More poor people are paying taxes because of that freeze. We need to end that. So what we need to do is align personal allowances with the living wage. And that is not what Rachel Reeves is uh, proposing. We need to align the state pension with uh, the living wage. Again, that is not being proposed. It is perfectly feasible. It is We can actually achieve that. So when the government talks about reducing the public debt, let's just remind ourselves of what actually uh, has happened. After the war, when the uh, economy was rebuilt and the welfare state was uh, uh, launched, the public debt was 270% of GDP. I don't remember our parents or grandparents sitting around uh, a fire and saying, oh my God, the public debt is so high, how are we going to pay this? The, the thing was, the economy was being rebuilt, the economy was being stimulated, new industries like biotechnology, information technology, aerospace was being created, and that you know, provided economic growth and wealth. So at the moment, the public debt is uh, about 97% of the GDP. And simply to say we don't want to borrow more, that is a self-imposed straight jacket. There is no law of nature or anything else at play. So we need to borrow and pay and increase the taxes on, uh, on the rich. Now, if you want to stimulate the economy, it is not only redistribution that you need to undertake. You also need to invest in productive assets. So just look at the numbers. In the 1980s, just as Thatcher's onslaught and privatizing everything began, we were spending 23% of our GDP on productive assets. After years of austerity, it is now down to 17%. So from year 2000 onward, we are, we've been investing 17% of our GDP in productive assets. And that is compared to 20 to 25% in major industrialized economies. And the reason for that is that the public, uh, public investment has basically disappeared. What the government is doing is handing vast amounts of cash subsidies instead. So in the last 10 years, 75.2 billion subsidy has been handed to rail companies. As a result, we don't own a single railway engine, compartment, seat, nothing. We don't own anything. We are handing billions to oil and gas companies. We are handing billions to coal uh, industry. We are handing billions to steel companies. So instead of directly investing in productive assets and new industries, the government policy has been to give free money. And I say it is free money, because when we are handing billions to rail companies or steel companies, the government is not taking any stake in equity, i.e. become a part owner or take a seat on the board. It is doing none of that. So we need to bring back what I call the entrepreneurial state, rather than a state which guarantees corporate profits. That is the version we have now. No, you know, other, other European countries don't do that. The government here is obsessed with privatization, but scratch the surface. What do you find? Our water our businesses are owned by state-owned companies from abroad. Our railways is owned exactly the same. Our energy companies, for example, EDF operates here. It is owned by the French government. And I regularly get messages from French people telling us, ah, aren't you people great? You're letting EDF make vast profits and that subsidizes uh, uh, our household bills. So, so we really need to change these things. But the problem is, Labour is trying to solve the Tory crisis with Tory policies. And that simply can't deliver. That just simply will not deliver uh, at all. So mm. if Labour... Can I just come in? Can I just yeah. come in? Because I'm just, um, you know, there, there is an idea that she's going over there saying all this because she wants to win an election and get the bankers and all the business, big business behind her. But supposing she's bluffing 
what would the consequences be if she gets in, if Labour gets in with Starmer and then she says, actually, I'm going to start taxing you lot? Would they do what they did to trust? I mean, would they then like have they they'd pull all the money and I don't know the mechanics of it, but they would crash the economy then. I mean, you can't bluff bankers and businessmen, can you really? I think uh, Labour would face a possible charge of lying in the period leading to the election by saying we won't increase taxes, we won't borrow, but they will have to. I think uh, if you explain what you're going to do with the money, there's no reason why uh, bankers and others can't be, uh, uh, you know, can't, can't uh, respect Labour's case. But it is also interesting. They go to Davos, they go to corporate bedrooms, uh, corporate boardrooms may even be bedrooms. I don't know, corporate boardrooms. Uh, uh, but uh, how, how many times have we seen any leaders of political party go and meet the homeless, the hungry, people going to food banks? They, they go to food banks for a photo opportunity. They don't really go for any other reason. So they really need to change their par par priorities. So I, I think, uh, you know, you have to simply do what is right. And uh, if the bankers and others want to withdraw cash, fine. I mean, if, if you look at uh, the London stock market, which people referred to last time, in the London stock market, it is usually secondary securities which are traded. There are very new, very few uh, initial public uh, offerings, IPOs as they are called. So there is very little new capital that is actually raised from the uh, London stock market. I remember when uh, Labour was led by Jeremy Corbyn, and they were up front that we are going to borrow. And indeed, I went around. Uh, John McDonnell asked me to go around to some of these corporate gatherings and explain. And we explained, look, if Labour invests more, that is good for you, because Labour will need to buy goods and services from corporations. If you invest in the NHS, well, they have... <laughs> Uh, the government will buy, whether it is medicines or new equipments, X-ray machines, MRI machines, they will be bought from the private sector. So private sector investment is very closely linked to public sector investment. And we yeah. simply, you know, by, by ditching the public sector uh, investment, we are actually also persuading the private sector not to invest. And the, and the real problem is the private sector has a very short-term horizon. They are not going to take long-term risks and invests. They never have. Mm. And that is, you know, that has been a huge problem in the UK. So if Labour want to stimulate the economy, they will also have to change corporate governance. And I have always argued you need worker elected uh, directors on uh, the boards of large companies, on utilities and banks insurance companies, you need customer elected uh, uh, directors to make sure customers get a good deal. And where there is a private monopoly of an essential service like rail, water, gas, energy, uh, mail, uh, you need it to be publicly owned and then put customer elected directors on those boards to watch what these guys do. But so Labour's not proposing any of these things. But my feeling is that within a few weeks, maybe months, no more than six months, they will have to backtrack. Right. And that, yeah. And then they won't be trusted. Uh, so it's just a sort of, that, then it's not good. Um, look, thank you, Prem. You, you always yeah, have just to, the... just to say, sorry, one final word, Chris. But I mean, I am actually preparing a paper. Uh, in, in collaboration with other colleagues in Parliament, because many of us are concerned that Labour will have to row back from pre-election promises very, very quickly. So we are preparing papers, policy papers, uh, to say what they will then need to do. And I am preparing a paper saying how they can easily find another £100 billion uh, from uh, taxes Taxes, tax rises, which will not affect 95% of the population. That 100 billion can be raised by simply eliminating the tax perks of the rich. And on this program, I've given examples such as aligning 
the tax on capital gains with the uh, tax rates on uh, wages, aligning the tax rate on dividends with the taxes on wages, making sure uh, that the pension tax relief is restricted to the basic rate of tax, not at 40 and 45 percent, as many people get. And that just that one reform alone will give you more than 10 billion pound a year. So I'm preparing a paper to show 100 billion pound, how 100 billion can be raised without adding a penny worth of tax rise uh, to uh, for for 95 percent of the population, really. So right, if anybody has point. any suggestions, they're most welcome. 